Hello again, I'm Sebastian Petroni with InvestComics.com and we're at Megacon over at the Boom Studios table and we're talking to uh, Eric Esquivel, or Eric M. Esquivel, uh, writer of, for, for Boom, he writes freelancers, as you can see this lovely, this lovely colorful assortment over here. And uh, I guess to start things off, um, freelancers, you, you jumped in with, with number two where you you, um, how did that? How did you end up popping in for the second issue? Yeah, so uh, Ian Brill wrote the first one. He's amazing. He does. A, he did Darkwing Duck and Dracula World Order. He's amazing. Uh, he wrote the first one. We co-wrote number two, and then starting with number three on, I'm the the solo guy. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, they're all great guys at Boom. They uh, want to give me a chance, and I appreciate it. So yeah, it's been great so far. And before this, you had done uh, a couple of, couple of rather interesting little books, including uh, everyone we've discussed before, everyone's personal favorite, Thor, the Unkillable Thunder Christ. Before we even discuss the book, the title, how'd that pop into your little head? I guess uh, comics kind of raised me. Uh, growing up as a kid, I didn't really have religion. I didn't really have like a strong parental role models. So I looked at comics. Uh, I don't drink because Batman didn't drink. I don't eat meat because Aquaman didn't eat meat. So like my my religion is comic books. So uh, Thor, the Unkillable Thunder Christ, that was pretty appropriate for that. Yeah. <laughs> Can't beat an answer like that. Um, and. You'd also done with uh, some stuff with Moonstone, including uh, you did Blackest Terror. But bef before you did Blackest Terror, Blackest Terror started out as a, uh, a smaller, was it like a mini comic before that or something? It well, I did a Black Terror book. Black Terror is a, is a pulp, um, public domain character from the uh, from World War II. He was a Nazi fighting guy. He was just like Captain America, but he had a sidekick like Batman, and he had a skull in his chest like Punisher. Didn't really define the guy so much. Um, so I, I used the name, and I uh, made a modern reinterpretation of that, where he's a black man. It's sort of like, what if Malcolm X were the Punisher? He's a guy who fights for social justice. So he's a, he fights Klansmen, he fights Tea Party guys, he fights corrupt senators, he fights like the real bad guys we have in the world. Uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And then from all of that, it, uh, how did you segue in? Like, what was the step? I know that it always looks like from the outside, oh, and this guy came out of nowhere and yeah. is suddenly an overnight success. Yeah. How did you segue from those into, you know, freelancers and boom? Uh, yeah, well, I, I've been self-publishing since I was 15. I'm 26 now, so it's 11 years to get this far. Um, I used to have a company called Modern Mythology Press, where I put out a graphic novel called Horrible Little People, and that did okay. And then I used that to land a job at Moonstone doing a Zombies vs. Cheerleaders, which is like a very schlocky B-movie, kind of really fun uh, pulp horror anthology. It's like a sexy Tales from the Crypt, if you can imagine <laughs> that. Um, so then I used that to get Blackest Terror, which uh, did really well, surprisingly. Um, I thought everyone was going to hate it. I was going to get lynched. So I did, I did just one issue of it. Um, and people liked it. Uh, so I used that to get the Thor book, which I was sure people were going to hate that, too, the Unkillable Thunder Christ. And they liked that even more. It sold three times as much as Blackest Terror. So then I used that to get the boom job, and that's where I'm at now. So hopefully I can work here for a while. I love the boom guys. Uh, I have another series coming out with Josh Covey pretty soon that's a horror fantasy kind of vibe, and that's going to be really cool. Uh, and some pitches in the works. So yeah, Boom is kind of where I want to be for the foreseeable future. They're awesome. Oh, and I work for BDI as well right now, too. I have a book coming out. Um, do you know the Legend of Oz Wicked West book? Yeah, yeah. It's like a steampunk kind of cowboy. Uh, Wicked Witch of the West is like a western. It's really cool. So I'm doing some stuff over there, too. They're friends of mine. They're awesome. Yeah, uh, we're we're big fans of, of Big Dog Inc. and and, yeah. and basically everything Tom Hutchinson does. Uh, with the Legend of Oz, uh, I always loved his Scarecrow. The, the, yeah. the, the, the Scarecrow. Well, it, Tom Hutchinson is one of like the coolest writers out right now. I think I love that guy. His stuff's really innovative and crazy. Um, so I'm I'm honored to work with him and to know that guy. Uh, Penny for your soul is like insane. It's yeah, it's it's like a it takes place in Las Vegas. People are gambling their souls for money. It's yeah, he's nuts. So I love working with that guy and collaborating on stuff. He's amazing. Uh, yeah, he's, he is amazing. He had also, he was nice enough, I told you previously, he was nice enough to borrow my character, Cat5, and put her into his Critter book. In the Critter universe, you're, you know, that's the upcoming uh, Oz stuff that you're doing isn't your first stint with, with BDI. You've done, uh, you did Electric Youth, right? Electric Youth, yeah, yeah, which is so much fun. He's sort of, he's a speedster character, like like a Flash or a Quicksilver, but he's trying to outrun adulthood, uh, which is a lot of fun. He's, he's this kid, he's a huge turd. 
Um, he's the fastest man alive, so he'll hit on girls and like bring them. He'll, like he'll hit on a girl in Chicago and then whisk her away to Paris really fast to woo her. And like he uses his powers kind of just to get laid, which is what any kid would do. Uh, so the other heroes in that world see his, his potential and they shove him into a universe where everyone is as selfish as he is, and he has to cope with that and uh, realize that he, like. He doesn't want a world to be like that. He wants to be the, the change that should happen in that world. So he, he, says, he sets it right and then comes back to our planet as a decent human being. Now, I, I'd read that and I loved it, I, but I can't remember when he meets the adult him. One of the parts of that book that cracked me was, was, what was, what was the name? Do you remember? What was the name you gave the adult version of Electric Youth? Yeah, so Electric Youth becomes Turbo 20-something. <laughs> Which is, yeah, yeah. You, you had me a turbo twenty something. I remember reading, and I, I you know, some people. Well, no, I actually laughed out loud. I was like, turbo twenty something. That's that brilliant. But I um, changed my Twitter handle to that for like five minutes. I was like hovering over it. Yeah. You should, you should just make it your signature on emails. Um, I love the critter universe too, because it's a it's a fun superhero world. It's not like like Marvel and DC are cool, but like I don't want to read a book about Robin dying. Like I, I like I want a really fun kind of like uh, you know Silver Age experience to read comics. And that, that's what you get from Electric Youth and the Critterverse. So. Yeah, he's, he's very 70s, 80s yeah. comic universe, you know, where it was more fun and big stuff happens, but it's yeah. not all dark and gritty. Yeah, so that book was like my 70s kind of like Kurt Swan superhero thing. <laughs> and, then, and then Freelancers is like my cool 90s. Like, it's very much Tank Girl inspired. It's very much Danger Girl inspired. Uh, there's hot girls with swords and guns and variant covers. So it's clearly a 90s book. Uh, it's really fun, yeah. Yeah, and they, they, uh, the, the bounty hunters for freelancers, um, they were basically raised in the, the, the orphanage that Quentin Tarantino would run. Yeah, it's, it's very Kill Bill. Yeah, it's, uh, it's two girls who grew up in a kung fu orphanage uh, who hated it. They're kids that are raised as like Zen Buddhists, and kids don't get that. So they, they move to L.A. Uh, and become bounty hunters in a fictional criminal underground. Uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. They fight like fake Rick Ross type gang lords, and yeah, it's, it's really cool. Really, Josh Cuffey draws it. The guy is amazing. So yeah. And just where, where can our viewers find you and and be able to keep an eye on all the various uh, outpourings you've got coming? Sure. Yeah, well, my my last name is unspellable. It's Escavel. So online I'm at emecomics.com, and from there you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Live Journal, MySpace, all that crap. It's ba it's basically your your little hub. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, well there, make the, it's getting loud in here as so they're getting ready to start things up. So I'll I'll, I'll let you go and greet you the the mobs of adoring fans about to pour in, and uh, I, I want to thank you for talking with us. Yeah, it's always a pleasure. Thanks, guys. All right, take care. Back to you, Internet.